Hey guys, I just finished making Pong in vanilla JavaScript using the HTML5 canvas attribute. Now it's going to work how you'd expect. You move the paddles and you can block it, but like you'll see here, if I miss it, then the team will get a point and the ball will be repositioned. If you want to see how we make this, stick around and find out. Okay, so you'll see here what we have is our basic HTML template already laid out. It's a standard HTML template. The only thing I changed was I gave it a title of Pong. I added a canvas ID. <clears throat> Sorry, I added a canvas tag, which has an ID equal to Pong game. And it has a style of background color black. So if I zoom out, you'll be able to see it here in the web document. I also loaded the main JS file right here. This is where all of our code is going to live. So we're going to start coding right in here. The first thing that we can do is say const canvas equals document get element by ID pong game. Then we can get the context. So const context equals document. Sorry, equals canvas get context. And we're going to get the context of 2D. Now let's set the width and the height. Let's say canvas width equals 600. Actually, let's make it 650. And then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to grab the height. And we're going to make that 400. Now let's say let score 1, right? Because we're going to have two players, so score 1 will equal 0. And then score 2 will also equal 0. Those will be used later. Now you'll see we have a slightly bigger canvas, but we don't really have anything on it yet. We're going to have to draw some elements. So the first thing that we can do is make a new class and call this class element. This class is going to have a constructor, which is going to take in a series of options. Now what these options are going to be is things like an X, a Y, a width, height, color, speed, gravity, things like that. So what we can do here is say this X equals options X. And this is going to be the basic theme throughout this. This Y will equal options Y. These are the X and Y where they will be placed on the actual canvas. They're also going to need a width. A height. Each element is going to have its own color. Speed. And gravity. Now for speed and gravity, I'm trying to think. Um, you know what, they will all have a gravity. I don't think they'll all have a speed though. So let's say it equals this, or if not, it'll equal just two. Then I think the only one that will have an actual speed is the ball. Okay, so that's our constructor. So now let's make an element. Let's say const player one equals new element and we're going to pass it an object this object is going to be all of the options so it can have an x of 10 a y of 200 a width of 15 a height of 80 and a color of Let's give it FFF. And a gravity of 2. So what we have here is first paddle. We're also going to need a second paddle. And we're going to need a ball. 
what are some other things we're going to need? We're going to need player one score attacks. And player two score attacks. We're going to need to draw elements. And detect collision. These are the main parts that we're going to be using. Now the first thing we can do is draw this first paddle just to give you an idea of how this is all going to work. So let's make a function here. Let's call it draw elements. This is going to take in an element. We're going to say context fill style equals element color and then context fill rect this is going to take in the element x element y element width and the element height So let's say here, draw elements. You know what? This shouldn't be plural. I'm going to change that to just draw element. And we're going to pass it whatever we just made, player one. All right, now we should see our first pawn paddle. So I'm just going to explain this a little bit better. The first thing we're doing is we're using this constructor in this class to create this element, right? We're giving an x, a y, a width, a height, a color, and a gravity. And the speed by default will be 2. Now, we're taking this and we're saying actually draw it, right? So if I comment out this calling of the function, we have no paddle. But with it, we do have a paddle. And this is how we're going to be creating all of the elements that we need. We're just going to be drawing them to the screen. For right now, I'm going to delete this call because I'm going to show you a better way to do it later. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like nice and early. The next thing that we can do is create our second paddle. So if this is player one, this one will be player two, which will be a new element. And this is going to be on the opposite side, so it's going to be 650 because that's the far right. We can leave the Y at 200 with... 15, height 80, color white, gravity 2, that's all good. Let's create another thing. Let's create our ball. We can leave all of these. Actually, you know what? Let's not make it 650 because that'll be the far end. Let's place this halfway. So let's say... Uh, what do we have? 650, so 650 divided by 2. This will put it in the center, and then let's center it here too. I think this was 400. 400 divided by 2. That should center it. Let's make the height of this 15 so that it's more of a squarish ball shape. And let's make the hexadecimal color this, which should be a kind of hacker green looking color. I think that'd be cool. Um, gravity can be 1, and let's make speed 1. All right, let's copy this. OK, let's write the code to display our actual scores. So let's say function display score one. Context font. Here we're just going to be drawing. So we're going to be writing actually. And let's make it 18 pixels and give it a Arial font. Context fill style. This is going to be the color. Let's make it white. So again, hashtag FFF. Context, fill, text. 
this is going to pass score one. Canvas width divided by two. So this is just going to center it. And then let's add 60 and 30. Or actually, if this is the first one, let's subtract 60. Do the same thing for 2. This one's going to take in score 2. And here we can add 60. Now, I'm not going to display it just yet, because before I display it, I want to talk a little bit and show you what it looks like when we actually use a loop. So I'm going to make a function loop. Now the interesting thing about this loop is what it's going to do is we're going to say window request animation frame and we're going to pass in this loop. This is going to essentially run this function constantly. So we're going to run it once at the beginning and then it'll keep running. Now something that we want to do here is draw the elements. So let's call draw elements plural, which isn't a function we've defined yet. So this is to draw the element. To draw all the elements, what we can do is say function draw elements. And the first thing we can do is say context clear rect zero zero canvas width and canvas height. Then we can say draw element singular and we can pass it player one. Then we're going to do three more of these. We're going to want to get player two and ball. Let's see what this looks like now. There we go. We don't have a player two though. Huh. Let's see if we can troubleshoot that real quick. Okay, 650 is a little bit too big. Let's give it 620. 630, 620 looks pretty good. Let's say 625. That looks perfect. Okay, so that was the problem there. All right, and now we have all three of our elements being drawn on screen. The next thing that we can do is say display score one. There we go, we have a zero for score one. Display score two as well. Perfect. So now we have the start of our game. It's not functional, it's not playable by any means, but it is there. So what I'm actually gonna do is copy this and instead I'm going to say ball bounce because we need to make the ball bounce. So over here before I detect collision let's say make ball bounce and we're going to make a function here. Let's call this ball bounce and a function here. Let's call this ball wall collision here we can call draw elements and here we can call ball wall collision So here let's say if 
ball period y plus ball period gravity. Let's actually full screen this for a minute because this is going to be a long if statement. Is less than or equal to zero or ball period oops, y plus ball period gravity is greater than or equal to canvas height. Then we're going to want to make a bounce. So we can make a bounce by saying ball period gravity equals ball period gravity times negative one, right? So we're just shifting the gravity. So if it's if the gravity is let's say one, now it'll be negative one. If it's negative one, then it will be one. We're just alternating that so that it gives a bouncing kind of a feature. And we're doing that when it, when it's going to be zero, so at the bottom, or when it's going to be at the top for the maximum height. Then we can say ball y equals ball gravity, ball x equals ball speed, else we can just copy these, else we'll just do these but we won't include the uh, times negative one. And I apologize, actually, these should be plus equals, not just equals. So what we can say in here is if ball x plus ball speed less than or equal to zero, or ball x plus ball speed. plus ball width is greater than or equal canvas width then we're going to say ball x plus ball speed Then we're going to say ball y plus equals ball gravity and ball speed equals ball speed times negative one and ball x plus equals ball speed. else ball y plus equals ball gravity and ball x plus equals ball speed. Sorry I made a mistake here I forgot to make this dot speed and this dot gravity. Let's save that and you'll see now the ball is bouncing and colliding up against the walls just like how we'd want. So this is basically the raw functionality of the game, right? You have the pong ball that bounces. Now the next thing we need to do is make it so that we can move these two little pong paddles and we need to be able to detect bouncing on the pong paddle. And lastly, we need to detect when it hits this, we need to detect which side it hits and change the score. Alrighty, first let's add the key movement. We can add that right here. We can do that by saying window add event listener. We're going to add key press. We're going to add a function. This is going to be called do key down and false. 
So now let's create that function. Do key down. I'm just going to take in an E. Let's say const key equals E period key. <clears throat> if the key is equal to W. Then what we can do is say player period y so if the key equals w and player period y minus player 1 period gravity is greater than zero then what we can say here is player one period y minus equals player one period gravity and then let's multiply it by four so basically what we're saying here is if the key w is down and the player is still in bounds then you know we're going to move it this way it won't go out of bounds so let's just say that and let's see what happens when we oop, didn't mean to do all that press the w key you'll see we go up so we've got one key movement down we can go up let's add some more let's say else if key equals s and player period y plus player one sorry this should be player one plus player one height plus player one gravity is less than the canvas height then what we can do is we can say player one y minus equals player one gravity times four. Now we should have up and down movement. Oh, we only have up movement. I messed that up. This should be plus equals. There we go. Down movement, up movement. That looks pretty good. And you'll see we don't really go out of bounds either. Okay, now let's add the second controller or second player. I'm going to copy this initial if statement, change the key here to, let's say, K and change player one to player two. And I'm going to copy this else if change all the player ones to two and change the key to K. You know what, let's do this one I. I feel like that's a good key for it. So now K goes down and up, and W does this. That's working really well. So now we have player movement added. That's all done. So the last step, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete everything 
inside of this ball wall collision function and I'm just going to leave the draw elements and I'm going to rewrite it because I'm going to add a little bit to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is the initial if statement which is going to be very long. Here I'm going to say if ball y plus ball gravity is less than or equal to player 2 y plus player 2 height. And ball x plus ball width plus ball speed is greater than or equal to player 2 x and we've got another and like I said this is going to be very long and I'll explain it after ball y plus ball gravity is greater than player 2 y okay so this is for the player 2 paddle. Basically what we're saying is if the y is less than or equal to this and if the x is greater than or equal to this. And of course we also have to check for the gravity. Now what, we, what this is really doing is it's just going to detect collision. If we look at our pong game what we really need to do is we need to have the ball be able to collide with this. So that's what we're doing. Actually, we're working on player two first. So what we're saying is, hey, if the ball runs into this, have it bounce off. But we don't want to add a score. That's the main trick here. That's why we need all of this code. So let's save that. Now let's add an or. Now basically what we're going to type is, I'm just going to copy and paste this, but it is the exact same thing just with player one. If all of this is true, what we can do here is say ball speed equals ball speed times negative one, right? Just give it a simple bounce like we did before. Else if ball x plus ball speed is less than player 1 x, then what we're going to do is we're going to say score 2. This basically means they just scored on the first player. So score 2 will be plus equal 1. And then we have some code. You've seen this before. The only thing different is I'm also adding 100, but essentially what this is saying is, hey, same thing we did before. We're just going to bounce it. Now I'm going to copy and paste this again too, but it's another else if, and this is for the opposite side. Now we're going to increase score 1 because it's going to be hitting the right side. So if we go into our game. You'll see we've already got a couple scores going, but let's see. Boom, bounces off the paddle. You can see if it bounces off this paddle too. It does, and if I miss it, it should give us a point. There we go. It's giving us a point, and it's resetting. Oh, I missed that. I'm missing all these. Okay. Well, you get the point. So that is our completed pawn game right there. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Let me know you enjoyed it. Take it easy and have a great day.